Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how objects work in P5.js and why you'd want to learn a new thing, <laughs> why, why it's worth even bothering. Actually, it makes a lot of sense because um, it, you, know, you can think of things like, uh, in my example here, a deck of cards. Uh, each of those cards is an object. So in real life, we would consider them objects. And objects in real life have both attributes associated with them and abilities. So, uh, you know, let's forget cards for a second, but a good example is like a dog, right? So a dog has attributes. It has a name, it has eye color, uh, it also has abilities. It can jump, it can bark. So there's kind of like this generic idea of a dog, but then there are specific dogs, right? So yeah, I described a dog just now, but then uh, my dog, maybe uh, my dog's name is Larry. He has brown eyes and yes, he can still jump and uh, bark. Actually, he, you know, maybe he can't bark. I don't know, but whatever. So they have kind of, um, there's like a, an idea, a generic idea of a dog, and then there are specific dogs. So this is kind of like, you know, the idea of objects in coding. We have something called a class, which is sort of the template or the generic idea of a thing, uh, like a dog. And then we have objects, which are kind of made from that template. So in my case, again, I have these cards and I'm going to make a card class. And then every time I instantiate an object, that's the word we use, we instantiate an object from that class. It means I'm basically peeling off from that, uh, that template. I'm, I'm, try, I'm making a specific card. So I'm going to do that six times and I'll have six different objects. Um, so let's try it. First thing is, if you want to make a class, I'm going to kind of, it, it's kind of weird to, to do this from scratch because there's a lot of things happening at once, but I'm going to make a class first because I've already described what that is. And you can put that at the bottom of sketch.js, but it makes sense usually to make that a separate file. So I'll call this card.js. And the way a class looks is it actually starts with class. And then we put the name of the class, this kind of generic thing like dog. We always put it in with a, put it with a capital letter at the start. That's just how we do it. And so when we actually try and make that dog, I can give you a hint as to what it looks like. If we're over here and we want to make a card, let's, uh, we're going to go kind of back and forth. So let's say we have a variable called my card. And here in setup, I'm going to make that card. What it will look like is my card equals new card. And then I will give it some information. So what's the basic information I need for that card? Maybe an image, um, maybe it's uh, position on screen. So like it's going to be 30 pixels over and 50 pixels down. So let's say that's enough, enough information to make a card. Well, that's what we need in our uh, in our constructor then. So a constructor is basically the this method that allows us to create a card. So when I when I use that new right here, when I use, oh, I took it, I got rid of it already. When I use new, uh, it, it calls the constructor. So this is just always called constructor. And I'm going to say, what, what information does it need to construct an object from this, from this class? So it needs an image, needs an X and a Y. That's what I said. So for this method, it's, what it's going to do is the basics are to just take, um, this information from the three arguments it's getting and set up all of its properties. So I said that a card has certain properties, right? It has an image associated with it. So what I can do is say this, that means the object that I'm trying to make from this uh, class, this dot image equals image. So I you know these don't have to be the same name, but it's kind of convenient. The parameter here is taking the plus place of this right here. And I'm assigning a property for this object to whatever got passed in when, when someone did a new. Um, so what else? I need X and I need Y. And I think it would be good to know the width and height of this object. So that I, I don't have to ask for that up here. I can actually get that from the image. So it would be just image dot width. And um, so just to step back for a second, if you look at uh, image in the reference, We look under image in the reference. There's something called p5.image. 
we've used an object before actually. So we used this create image function. It created a, an image that we stored in an IMG variable like this. And then um, look, it's doing things, img.loadPixels. So this looks like a function because it has parentheses after it. Functions associated with an object are called methods. So this is an object and this is the method that's being called. So I said that uh, they objects that have uh, abilities and they have kind of characteristics, right? We call those, uh, we've been calling those functions and variables, but in, with objects, they're called methods and properties. So is there a property here? Yeah, right here. So this is not a function. It's just like a variable that's associated with that object. So image.with is actually, with is actually a property of that, uh, of that object. So that's, um, that's what we're doing here is, is taking our image that was passed in and getting its width. So I'll do the same here for height. And then I just thinking ahead, I said that there was some way to hide these cards. So I'm gonna make a an is hidden property and set it to false to start out with. So the only other thing that I need right now is to have some way that this object can display itself on screen. And I'll make a, a method called display doesn't need to take any arguments. It's just going to show on the screen the image associated with um, with this card. So I'm going to use this again because I'm getting one of its properties that I just set up in the constructor. And I can get its X and get its Y. And I guess I could give it the width and height too. Why not? So that's it. That should be able, this, this is enough to make a card object. Let's see if this works. Um, and in fact, let's just make a single card. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make a temporary image um, from the assets folder. I'm going to get card2.png. And now I'm going to make my, my card object. New card. And actually, look, it's giving me hints. It tells me what it needs. It needs an image. So I just made an image and I'm gonna give it some X and Y. And then in the draw, the draw function, I just wanna have that card show itself. So I'll use that method that I created, display. Let's see if this works. Uh, no. So the first thing is card is not defined. Okay, so we, we defined card here, but this is interesting. Um, if you look in index.html, we are loading sketch.js, but if we have another J JavaScript file that we want to load, we actually have to type it here. So uh, it will look the same and that should work. Okay, so something happened. I don't know, <laughs> it just turned gray. There are, no, there are no errors in the console, but it didn't quite work. So what's happening? Let's see, um, image, it's displaying the image. I think, you know, one thing that could be happening is that this image isn't fully loaded when I try and make the card. So what we've done in the past is uh, we've used preload for that. So let's try that. So I'll make temp image up there and I will do the load image inside preload. Let's see if that makes a difference. That works. So I think what was happening is it was trying to create an image before temp image even had anything in it. So this is a, this preload thing is a real a real thing. So let me change that to three and now I've got a different one. So I've got a card. Can I, can I make it so that when I click it, it disappears? That would be interesting. Or how about this? If I just, yeah, let's try it. So um, in here we can do mouse clicked and say if, uh, so I don't have a method for this yet, but it would be nice if I could say if um, my card dot is inside. So I'm giving it two values, an X and a Y, and this will return true if those two values are happen to be inside the bounds of that card. That's what I want. So if that's true, then I'm going to, for my card, I want to change its is hidden property to true. Let's see if this works. Uh, first of all, if I do this um, and I click, it says, hey, there is no, oh, mouse X is not defined. Okay, that's, is that it? Mouse. Okay, let's try that again. 
Okay, now it says is inside is not a function. My card dot is inside. So I didn't put that in yet. So let me add that method here is inside. Oh, it takes an X and a Y. So this is just basically one long if statement. I want to see if the X and Y, X pause and Y pause, uh, if those are actually in the bounds of the card. So this is just one long expression. So if the X position is greater than the leftmost side of this card and X position is less than the leftmost position of this card plus its width and the Y position is greater than the top of the card and the Y position is less than the top of the card plus its height. If all of that is true, then return true. And otherwise, uh, return false. Okay, so does that work? Click. Well, maybe. <laughs> no, I'm getting no errors. It does seem like uh, it's happy with what I've put here. I've done this, my card is hidden equals true. But nowhere in here do I say, is this property true or false? So that would be here in display. So I only want to show the image if uh, is hidden is false. Otherwise, don't, don't do it. So let's see. Oh, uh, if is, oh, sorry. Okay, first, it's a comparison, not an assignment. So, okay, it works. Boom. Uh, let's go a little further. This thing about click, clicking a key on the keyboard and having it um, make all of the cards or this card show up again. I could just say my card is hidden equals false. Click it, press a button on the keyboard, comes back. So this is this is everything you need to know about uh, how I would create this object, right? I created the class. I've got the constructor here. I've got a method that tells if we're if we're clicking inside the bounds of the card or not, and I've got something that displays it depending on whether it's hidden or not. And then over here, this program is really simple. It's just loading an image, making the card object displaying it every frame, and then handling the mouse clicking or the key pressing. It's a very short program for, you know, something that I set out to do, which is kind of like, you know, the beginning of something that could be game-like or whatever. Now, pause and, you know, look back at this if, if anything didn't make sense. And I'm going to, I'm going to uh, change this up because this is just for one card. So let's make this work with a deck of cards. So what I need to do is I want to make an array it's an empty array, but I'm making an array to hold a deck of cards. And I'm just going to do this a little differently. So in setup, we're going to basically use a for loop to get all of these to become cards. So for, for, for i equals zero, it's going to start with zero. It's going to, whoops go until it's less than or equal to five. So that should include all of my images. And what is it gonna do? It's going to first try and load that image, whatever image is associated with that number. So we've done this before, but um, I'm gonna make, again, I'll call it temp image. I'm gonna load image from the assets folder. I know it starts with card. And then I'm going to tack on the number of the iteration of the loop we're in. So the first time it'll be card zero, next time it'll be card one, all the way to card five. And then it ends with .png. So we're just sticking them together with um, plus signs. So now we should be able to make a card, new card. It uses temp image. And we could just put in some numbers here, like uh, 40 and 40, but they'll all get you know, they'll all be in the same position on the screen. So we need the Y position to actually increase over time. So um, we need a bit of a formula there. We would say it's 40 from the top at least, but then we will add some 
based on i. So the first time it'll be 40 times 0 times 150, which is just 40. The next time it'll be 40 times 1 times 150, which is 190. And then it'll be 40 times 2 times 150, which is 340. So it'll keep going down as it makes new cards. Uh, or increasing as it makes new cards. So that's it. The last thing to do is just add it add that card that we just made to the deck array. And there's a nice way to do that. Deck, it turns out, is also an object. So deck.push is one of its methods. Uh, and that just means take a variable and push it onto the array. So that's an easy way to add something to an array. So uh, hopefully at this point, we have a deck of cards. And now instead of just displaying one, I will have to iterate through the array and display all of them. So I could use a for loop, but um, there's an easier way. There's something called for each. So this says for whatever array you're talking about, there's a method called for each. And um, then you just use this, you know, this doesn't have to be element. It could be any name. Uh, I'll call it card. And we'll refer to that name in this second part, which is basically uh, its own little mini function. So for every item in the array, it's going to give us this variable called card. It's like a temporary variable. And then it's going to run whatever's in curly brackets as if it's like a function. So what do I want to do in here? I think I want to just say for that card variable, that temporary variable that represents each item of the array, I want to have it display itself. That's it. So I replace that one line with one line, but this one line actually goes through every item in the array and calls display on each of the objects in that array. Great. Um, I don't know if, if I save, maybe this will work. Nope, it's not working, but that's okay. We don't, I don't know why yet, but we'll see. Um, eh, you know what? Let's make this work because it should be working right now. So what's happening? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure, but you know, I've actually kind of, I've been through this before and I've troubleshot this before, troubleshooted this before. Remember uh, when we tried to do this before, make an image variable and use it right away, that was a problem. This is the same problem we had before. Like it's not finished loading by the time I try and make a card from it. It's not so easy to just break this out into a preload right now. So let's look at a different method. Uh, if I look at load the load image function in the reference, you can see there's actually like the way we've been doing it, which is to load the image in preload and then use it in setup. And then um, this is an alternative, which is to use what's called a callback. So you load image, but then you give it a second argument, which is actually, actually very similar to what we did here. It's like a temporary uh, variable and a function that is happening for each for that variable each time. So it's kind of the same thing here is basically you, it's going to try and load the image and then it uh, creates a temporary variable and does whatever is in brackets when it's done loading the image. So this will work out perfectly. In this case, you can see they're trying to load the image, but they don't want to do it if it hasn't actually been loaded into, into a variable. So this is how they're showing it. In our case, we're going to say, um, add that second parameter here, we'll call it image, just like they did. And what I'm going to do is make a little mini function here that actually creates my object using that temporary variable that got created. Um, and actually here, this is interesting, they don't actually, here it's image equals load image, but here you just run it as load image. So let's do that. Let's get rid of this temp image thing. Because temp image, you know, this is actually the temporary variable. So this should work. Let's see what happens. Okay. Temp card is not defined. Mm, oh, okay. So on line nine. So this is line nine. It says temp card is not defined. Well, I did define it here, but this is in its own little function. And if you remember, if you define a variable inside of a function, it's only accessible inside that function. That's why we create variables up here sometimes because we want it to be accessible in all of the functions. So uh, we could somehow make that a, well, we can't really make that a global variable, but what, what I really need right now, I think is to just move this in here. So now it actually is accessible, right? So temp card is in the same function. This should be fine. So it loads an image when it's successful, it both creates an object and pushes it onto the deck. 
here it is. We've got all of the guys. Of course, clicking uh, and hitting the keyboard are not working. That's what I'm doing here. They're just giving errors because I didn't get to that part, right? So how do we how do we make that work? Um, but you know, this is a good time to pause and make sure that this makes sense, which is basically using a loop to load each uh, to make an object for each each image that we have and push it onto the deck. And then here, how we use this for each function to just display each one. So mouse click will get a little more complicated as well because we don't want to just check for one my card. We don't even have a my card anymore. We want to check for all of the uh, objects in the array. So I'll use a for loop. And I'll just call that I. So I want to go through the whole array, which is called deck, right? Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'll leave this this kind of thing that it gave me here, which is to just create a, a variable called element from whatever the current array item is. So let's use that. And I think what I'm going to do is say if it's kind of the same thing I did below. If element dot is inside mouse x mouse y uh, element is hidden true that's it i think that's i think that's it let's see click 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 it's working so uh it's doing the same thing we did before but instead of for one card it's going through the whole array every time you click i think we have to do the same thing here so for this one, maybe I'll use um, my fancy for each loop. So for each element in the deck, I'll call it card again. For each card in the deck, it should change is hidden to false. So that's replacing this. Let's see if that works. So boom, boom, boom hit a button on the keyboard, they all come back. Now it doesn't shuffle because that was that was something I said I wanted to do too. I can do that after this. I can say the car the the deck array is actually equal. There's a, actually a function in p5.js called shuffle. It takes an array and returns a shuffled version of the array. So I'm saying deck equals a shuffled version of the deck. So I'll save and it's not working. So I'm hitting the keyboard, but it's bringing them back, but it isn't changing anything. And the reason for that is because remember each object in the array has an X and a Y associated with it. So no matter how I shuffle them in the array, no matter what order they're in, they still have the same X and Y values. All right, bug. Um, so what I think I need to do is just do the same thing I did up in the beginning where I gave it an, a new Y value. So yes, the array has been shuffled, but I need to give them new Y values based on the, the order that they're in now. So I think that's, you know, you can you can ignore this if you're not interested in this part, but uh, it is just one, one more detail. So for each item in the array, I want to change its y value. And I'm just going to use the same formula I used up above, which is 40 plus i times 150. So that, that should be it. I think, yeah, it's shuffling them now. So this, but I am do, I'm looping here and I'm looping here. I feel like there's probably an easier way to do that. I think I can just combine the two, right? Element dot is hidden equals false, and I can get rid of this loop. There we go. That's the whole thing. So uh, hopefully this makes sense, and you can kind of go back over it. But uh, this is the whole card class. This describes a card. And that's really kind of, this, once you've got this down, um, you know, if I decided, well, when I click one of these guys, I want it to dissolve or I want it to spin around or I want these to be moving all the time and you have to click them. It's hard to click them, you know, because they're moving like all those things just become different 
parts of the methods that are here or diff different methods get added. Maybe it needs new attributes like uh, color or something. Uh, if I'm like, you know what, I want these to look more card-like. Um, I don't want it to just display. I want it to actually display with a... Uh, uh, with a rounded rectangle around it. Maybe I'll do stroke white and stroke weight um, 10, could be too thick. Uh, and then I'll make a rectangle that just uses the same x, y width height as the image. Oh, okay, I guess I have to draw that before the image. There we go. That looks looks better, and I can add a radius to the end, so now they're rounded. That doesn't look as good, but whatever. So, you know, making changes now is like, oh, I need to change something about the cards. I know exactly where to go, right? It would be in the display. So um, it, it allows us to have the kind of logic of the game in here and everything about the card separated out into an object. So it's kind of nice that way. Also, it just makes sense that, you know, we, we understand these as individual objects and it's just an array of them. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, you know, this little added bit of clicking and pressing is this. So if you look at this program, that's a very small program. Uh, and this is pretty small as well. So, you know, just to be able to make this, uh, which this is totally functional, it's really just kind of like two small bits of code. So that's it. Hopefully that makes sense. And let me know what questions you have. Thanks.